I just found a company that could revolutionize everything from solar panels, home batteries, and electric vehicles. And no, I'm not talking about batteries, which I talk about a lot. I'm talking about inverters, the magical devices that convert direct current found in everything from solar panels, wind turbines, and batteries into alternating current, which is used in electric motors and our homes. Current inverter efficiencies top out between 95 and 99%. But a publicly traded company called Hillcrest Energy, ticker symbol HLRTF, says they might have figured out the holy grail for inverters a technology called zero voltage switching. And they say their inverters are 99.7% efficient. That difference may not seem that big, but it is an absolute game changer. So how does it work and how impactful will this breakthrough be? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky and this is 2Bit Da Vinci. Huge thanks to Hillcrest Energy Technologies for partnering with us to help us make this episode. I had the pleasure of chatting with Harold Hengstenberger, an electrical engineer and member of the Hillcrest Energy Technologies team. Obviously, my first question for him was, why is zero voltage switching considered the holy grail for inverters? And how is his team able to solve it? <laughs> this is a question we are asked uh, uh, again and again, and it's very hard to answer, actually, you know? Um, Soft switching is, or zero voltage switching is known from DC DC converters as well. The principle of a ZPS inverter is not completely new. But you know, sometimes uh, you need the right chips. That took a very long while. Uh, you need the right microcontrollers, and maybe you as well need the right uh, team and the right time. A key element to this dark market opportunity is that the company has patented IP to protect this transformational technology and has spent about $20 million developing it. And yet its market cap is only slightly above that amount. But before we talk about how big an impact this tech can have, let's talk about how it works. If we measure the voltage of this solar panel on an oscilloscope, this is what we'd see, a constant value of around 35 volts, direct current. But if we do the same thing on one of the legs of our home electrical panel, we'd see something very different. The voltage would be 120 volts, but you'll notice that the voltage varies and forms a sine wave. This is alternating current. And this is why the solar panels atop our roofs need one of these, an inverter. Inverters are needed in everything from home batteries like this one or this one to electric vehicles where they invert the DC from the batteries into AC for AC motors. Now, if we take a battery and swap the positive and negative ends back and forth, we get a square step wave that looks a bit like our AC sine wave. But an inverter does this with a series of switches called IGBTs in a clever arrangement. Instead of swapping the battery terminals, we can create a system with four switches and a controller to control them. If we close switches one and two, the current flows in the forward direction through our AC load. To switch the direction, we just open switches one and two and close switches three and four. Now current flows through the AC load in the opposite direction. Using a technology called pulse width modulation, we can create a smooth sine wave without actually changing the voltage. By pulsing when and how long the switches are open and closed, we can break down one complete cycle into segments. Starting with a short duration pulse, followed by a series of increasing duration pulses, reaching a maximum and then working our way back again. Now, if we look at the average value in each of these segments, we'll begin to see our sine wave. And the more segments we create, the smoother it'll be. This is referred to as the switching frequency, and we'll get back to that in a moment. The two main sources of inverter energy losses come from conduction losses and switching losses. Conduction losses happen in all electronic components, and it's a function of the materials like copper, a very good but not perfect conductor. To address conduction losses, technologies based on silicon, such as superjunction MOSFETs, are used in modern inverters. The big breakthrough that Hillcrest Energy Technologies made addresses the second type of losses that come from switching. Now, switching doesn't actually happen instantaneously. It takes a very small amount of time, like 100 nanoseconds. So the voltage graph during the switch actually looks like this. If we look at the voltage over the switch as it opens, it rises over the switching duration. This current drops to zero as the switch is fully open. Since power is current times voltage, the power is zero when the voltage is zero here and when the current is zero here. So then our switching losses happen in this transitory period, in this area under the current and voltage curves. This power is lost as heat during the switching process and results in lower efficiency and added heat that the inverter has to dissipate. And remember that this switching loss happens each and every time the switches change state. So it scales up with higher switching frequency. And this is the engineering trade-off that inverters have to make to increase performance with higher switching frequency 
while minimizing losses and waste heat. Modern inverters switch around 10,000 kilohertz or 10,000 times per second, which has historically been a sweet spot. We can reduce switching losses by either reducing the voltage or current during switching. This is called zero voltage switching and zero current switching respectively. And while this concept has been pursued for some time, Hillcrest Energy Technology says they've done it using novel control software algorithms. A hard switching is an inverter which switches and, and, and a chip hard. That means it turns it on no matter what happens and it turns it off the same way. We use the FPS technology, that means zero voltage switching. We turn on or turn off the switches when the voltage across the switch is zero or the current is zero. Therefore, knowing that uh, uh, electrical power is the, the product of current times uh, voltage, if one of both is zero, the, the, the power is zero. Here are some of the benefits that this provides. One, material elimination of diode reverse recovery current spikes. Two, the reduction of overshoot, which protects devices, reduces ringing significantly, and therefore electromagnetic interference. And three, the material elimination of risk associated with the Miller effect. Due to the fact that we have a soft switching behavior, we have a very smooth transition, a very slow, I call it slow even if it happens we, uh, below 100 nanoseconds, okay? But it's extremely smooth. It has no ringing, no overshoot. These overshoots and this ringing during the, the switching processes causes EMI. And that's a disturbance that you can can measure everywhere in the in the in the lines. That's the conducted EMI more or less, which every other device in the vehicle or connected to the inverter is, is seeing. In an EV, their inverter could result in up to 15% reduction in the size of the battery pack and result in efficiency gains of up to 13% at the motor during partial loads. Remember that most inverter ratings are at peak output. And when you're cruising around the city at 40 miles an hour, you're only using a very small portion of the available power. Interestingly, car makers are actually more interested in what this technology means for electromagnetic interference because it results in up to 50% reductions in the size of DC link capacitors and EMI shielding and filters in the system. This could lead up to 300 pounds in weight savings from the battery pack and up to $1,500 in battery cost savings and an overall $2,200 reduction in the cost of an EV just by switching to the ZVS inverter. What's really amazing is that they achieve this not with super expensive rare materials, but with control algorithms and software. They believe their inverters can be at price parity with today's inverters, leading to a no compromise solution. This is a classic example of when technologies converge. For better and better inverters, we need more powerful hardware, more powerful processors, and we're kind of sitting at a perfect storm where all that's come in together. Here's a look at some internal testing performed by Hillcrest Energy on traditional hard switching inverters versus their zero voltage switching inverter. As the switching frequency increases, you'll see that the hard switching power losses increase pretty dramatically, but the ZVS inverter can ramp up switching frequency with minimal effects. But it's not just electric vehicles. This next part is important for fans of the company and potential investors to truly understand. On a 250 megawatt solar farm, if we increased efficiency by 2%, that would result in an additional $13.2 million in revenue over the lifetime of the plant. As the world moves to more renewables like wind and solar, batteries and EVs, the global inverter market is going to increase in a big way. Hillcrest projects that the global inverter market will be $117 billion by 2029. Now, these are the early days and there will be further testing and development required. But a key next step is joint partnerships, like the recent one they signed with Ocean Batteries to deploy ZVS inverters in grid-connected energy storage solutions. This is a really exciting breakthrough and one I'm going to be watching closely. I'm going to try to reach out to the team and get some access to tour their facilities and get some hands-on experience with their ZVS inverters. So definitely subscribe and like this video because you're not going to want to miss that. But if you're curious about Hillcrest Energy Technologies, which trades in the US with the ticker symbol HLRTF, or want to learn more about the company or their stock, read their reports or white papers, we'll put links to all that material in the video description. You could also reach out to the co-founder of the company who serves as CEO, Mr. Don Curie, and actually speak with him directly like many shareholders do. That's a quick look at the ZVS inverter. I'm Ricky Tuba Da Vinci, and until next week, check out this video next.